Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tamar Mohammed, uh, CEO of Aspect Biosystems. Uh, our company is based in Vancouver, Canada, and we're focused on uh, bioengineering uh, tissue therapeutics. We see this as uh, the next frontier uh, in regenerative medicine. Uh, so thanks again to the, uh, the organizers uh, for inviting us, uh, giving us the opportunity to share our story and the exciting updates uh, that, uh, that we're up to at Aspect. <clears throat> So just as a briefer into the company, uh, Aspect uh, is about five years old. We spun out of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada uh, in 2017. And since then, we've been making a lot of uh, progress. We've assembled a team of over uh, 70 scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, and innovators in the regenerative medicine space. Uh, we built a very strong IP portfolio with over 70 filings and 22 granted patents. Uh, we've uh, brought in smart venture capital to fuel our growth and development with over $50 million uh, raised uh, to date. Uh, we have a broadly applicable 3D printing technology that allows us to create these tissue therapeutics. Uh, we're advancing our own internal proprietary pipeline focused on pancreatic tissue uh, for type 1 diabetes and liver tissue for a host of acquired and genetic liver disorders. I'll highlight those uh, programs. Them, uh, later on, uh, but we also partner beyond our pipeline with global biotech companies. We've been quite fortunate to collaborate with uh, uh, the likes of uh, GSK, Merck, and others on different applications of our technology, uh, as well as researchers uh, around the world, uh, and I'll highlight some of the areas that we're focused on beyond our pipeline as well. Uh, so at a high level, uh, Aspect is really marrying its uh, bioprinting and manufacturing technology with fit-for-purpose biomaterials. Uh, these biomaterials play key roles, uh, including uh, durability of these implantable tissue structures, immune protection, controlling the microenvironment, and we marry these with therapeutic the cells. These are really the heart of our bioengineered ter tissue therapeutics that deliver the therapeutic effect. Uh, and so we marry these three pillars of our technology stack to create these implantable living tissue tissue structures uh, that repra replace damaged organ functions inside of the body. Uh, so our goal is not to create an entire organ that looks exactly like uh, an organ, at least not to start off with, but to look at organ functions that have been lost due to disease and look at ways to actually repair, uh, replace uh, those organ functions that have been lost. And so when we think of bioprinted tissue therapeutics, we think of them in, in terms of one of three different categories. Uh, the first is cell replacement, uh, where we're looking to uh, replace cells that have been lost due to disease. Uh, so a prime example of this is in the type 1 diabetes space, where we have a program that would, we're advancing towards clinical evaluation, uh, and I'll highlight that later on. Uh, the second category is tissue regeneration, uh, where we're creating tissue uh, structures that we're implanting into the body to stimulate the repair of tissues uh, and, and biological functions inside of the body. Uh, and an example of this is a, a vascularized tissue therapeutic program that we have uh, partnered with uh, our collaborators in Japan, JSR. And finally, the last category that we're pursuing is uh, where we're looking at incorporating engineered cells uh, in our tissues uh, and implanting these uh, uh, tissues into the body to deliver specific defined factors that have been uh, lost uh, or that ability to produce these factors has been lost due to disease. And so at a high level, uh, really what we're doing is uh, combining our therapeutic cells with materials and printing those into tissue structures. You can see an example of one of these uh, pancreatic tissue structures uh, composed of this fiber network that's packed full of uh, cells. You can see one of our in vivo scientists uh, actually handling uh, one of these structures, and you can see a zoom in of uh, that tissue structure showing one of these individual strands uh, with uh, insulin-producing cells uh, embedded within uh, the core of that strand. Uh, and these tissue structures are implanted into remote locations of the body that uh, are chosen uh, for surgical uh, suitability chosen to uh, uh, support the tissue function uh, and so we implant these tissues and we can retrieve these tissues uh, at, at appropriate times. And so at the heart of our uh, technology is really our microfluidic printing approach uh, and so this is the uh, assembly approach that we use to construct these tissues uh, and so we were the first uh, group in the world to uh, really marry microfluidics with 3D printing uh, to create these biological structures. So we really see ourselves as pioneers in this space that gives us uh, a lot of advantages in terms of incorporating multiple different cell-loaded biomaterials, uh, processing these and depositing these different uh, cell-loaded fibers to construct these uh, really intricate structures. And so this is best uh, exemplified using this video where you could see multiple different cell-loaded biomaterials that are brought into our microfluidic print head. 
Uh, and so each of these lines uh, could be a different material, ECM factors, immunoprotective materials, and all of them uh, could be loaded with cells. Uh, and they're all brought in in liquid form so we can manipulate uh, using microfluidics and computer control. Uh, and then right before a deposition, we introduce a cross-linking agent that quickly turns into a solid so that we could pattern it uh, in, in 3D. And so you could see us rapidly switching between these different input materials, uh, cross-link them, uh, them and creating these uh, uh, durable structures uh, in 3D according to our software designs. And so we're applying this technology to create our own proprietary pipeline that we're advancing towards clinical evaluation. Uh, AB739, or our pancreatic tissue program, is uh, one of our lead uh, opportunities that we're pursuing. And so this is a pancreatic tissue uh, for uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, we're currently in animal stages of evaluation and have initiated FDA uh, interaction. Uh, liver tissue is also a big area of focus for us. We're developing liver tissue for acquired uh, and genetic liver disorders. Uh, the goal would be to bridge uh, to recovery or bridge to transplant, depending on the target product profile and, and the specific disease indication. Uh, and last, we have several discovery programs uh, in the ophthalmology, neuroscience, and cardiovascular space uh, uh, partnered with research uh, groups around the world. And so I'll highlight uh, some of uh, the data from our pancreatic tissue program. Uh, what you can see here is zoom in uh, pictures of our pancreatic tissue. Uh, on the left-hand side, you could see one of the individual fibers that make up uh, our tissue structures. In the inner core region, you could see the islet uh, clusters uh, that, that we print. And surrounding that core uh, cell-loaded uh, uh, component, uh, you have an immunoprotective uh, shell uh, that provides that level of uh, barrier from the immune system. Uh, those tissues are implanted into animals, in this case in the IP space of mice. Uh, and then if we look at uh, the uh, image with the, uh, the green, uh, you could see that when we retrieve these tissues at 31 days post-implantation, uh, we see really good viability. Uh, and last, uh, uh, you, we see really good function when we take these tissues out uh, of the animals we, uh, and we stain them for disosome uh, or insulin, we see a bright pink indicating that these tissues are highly functional. Uh, and then our next step was to demonstrate efficacy uh, in appropriate disease models. Uh, and so we used the streptozoin uh, uh, model, uh, the gold standard in diabetes uh, uh, research. Uh, and so what we did is we took a healthy uh, mice, uh, induced them with diabetes via streptozoin injection uh, a few days before we implanted our tissues. You could see an associated rise in blood glucose indicating that we are in the diabetic state. Uh, and then at time zero, we implant uh, these diabetic animals with our bioprinted pancreatic tissues. And you could see that we could very quickly bring down uh, the blood glucose levels to uh, normal glycemia for the duration of the study, which was about 90 days. If we look at uh, uh, C-peptide levels, so this is human C-peptide, a biomarker of insulin, we could see that uh, throughout the duration of the study we have positive uh, human C-peptide, again indicating that we have fi highly functional tissues uh, in, in these animals. Uh, when we look at the kinetics of response, it's also very encouraging. Uh, and so what we did in, in this uh, uh, study uh, is we provided uh, the animal uh, with a high uh, concentration of blood glucose, or high concentration of glucose, and we looked at uh, the, uh, the response over a 180-minute uh, period. Uh, the control uh, in this study was a non-diabetic animal that did not receive our bioprinted tissues, uh, and the blue curve is a diabetic animal that indeed received our bioprinted pancreatic tissues, and you could see that within 30 minutes uh, from receiving that high concentration of, 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 of glucose, uh, our tissues are able to bring the, that animal uh, to normal glycemia within 30 minutes. Uh, so again, very, very encouraging signs for us to see. And so a big part of our focus right now is scaling up to, into larger uh, species and eventually uh, humans as we march forward to first in human trials. Uh, and so this is really where our technology shines. We're able to uh, design different 3D architectures in software. Uh, and so we have a computational element where we're able to change parameters in software and then transform those into real living uh, tissues almost in a single step uh, printing process. Uh, and so you could see that transformation into this high fidelity bioprinted tissue. Uh, you could see a very nice uh, uh, distribution of the islets uh, in a very controlled way uh, in this uh, fiber based network. Uh, on the bottom left, you could look at the in vitro viability, and you could see very good viability. So our printing process is uh, able to provide a very cell-friendly approach to assembling these tissues. 
Uh, and then when we look at doubling the dose, just to look at that lever in terms of scale, we see that as we double the dose of the islets in our tissues, we're also able to double the function. So we have multiple different levers that we could use uh, to, uh, uh, to, to really scale these tissues into larger species. Uh, and so we took those uh, scaled up uh, tissues uh, and tested them into larger rodents, in this case rats. Uh, and so what we're able to see is that uh, for about 180 days or six months, uh, we are able to uh, normalize uh, blood, uh, blood glucose in these diabetic animals using these scaled up bioprinted tissues. Again, demonstrating our ability to achieve uh, robust long-term tissue function uh, with, uh, with our tissues and, and demonstrating efficacy in these animal models. And so we're now progressing in, uh, into uh, uh, further uh, studies, uh, including uh, looking at uh, evaluating these tissues in, uh, in pigs. Uh, so I'll switch gears uh, to liver. Uh, so that's another big area of focus and expertise uh, in, in the company that we've been building up over the, uh, the last year. Uh, and so we're really looking at developing it, liver tissue as a platform in and of itself uh, that we could target several different indications with uh, uh, in the acquired liver disease space as well as the uh, monogenic liver disorder. Uh, uh, side of things. Uh, and so on the top left hand side, you can see uh, viability data uh, demonstrating that our tissues are, are, are viable, uh, the cells are viable in, in, the, in the tissue environment, uh, indicated by the, uh, uh, the, the viability images that you could see on the top left. Uh, we implanted those tissues into animals and we demonstrate that we have good function over the duration of the study. Uh, this was uh, demonstrated through albumin levels uh, and uh, the duration of the study was about a month. When we took those tissues out uh, of the animals uh, and so when we explanted them at 28 days, we again confirm really good function as measured by albumin and ammonia detoxification. Uh, and on the bottom left hand side, what you can see is uh, the, the morphology uh, of these uh, liver organoids that we print uh, with. And so this is upon explantation of our tissues. You can see really nice bile duct formation, ECM deposition, polarization, really indicating appropriate uh, biological function. Uh, and so we're advancing these uh, tissues into different uh, disease models uh, to obtain efficacy data demonstrating the broad applicability of, uh, of this liver tissue platform. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, big challenges in the liver space is uh, you need a lot of cells. And so you, you probably need about five to seven times the number of cells uh, compared to, uh, uh, to the diabetes uh, space. And so what we wanted to do is demonstrate that we have a unique ability to pack a ton of cells uh, in, uh, in our tissue structures and keep them alive. Uh, and so what we were able to do on the left-hand side is demonstrate as we quadruple uh, the cell density from 25 million cells to 100 million cells, uh, and we've been able actually to go much higher than that, but as we quadruple the cell density, we'll we're able to see an order of magnitude increase in the tissue function. And so we're able to pack a ton of these cells, uh, and these cells like uh, to be close to each other, uh, and they like being in the environment that we're putting them in, which is uh, great to see. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, you could see that we could uh, further get an increase uh, in viability and associated function uh, by moving from single cells to uh, 3D spheroids. Uh, so we're taking these 3D hepatocyte spheroids, putting them in ideal 3D environments, uh, implanting that uh, into, uh, into humans uh, uh, eventually is our, is our goal. Uh, and so this whole theme of moving into 3D is uh, demonstrating real benefits. Uh, and so we also recognize the power of incorporating uh, stem cells, uh, particularly in, in the liver program, to provide a scalable hepatocyte cell therapy. And so we partnered uh, with the University uh, uh, Health Network, uh, the McEwen Institute uh, of uh, Stem Cell Research uh, in Toronto, uh, one of the leading centers in liver research. Uh, and so they have a uh, stem cell protocol that, uh, that has been patented uh, and has been uh, proven uh, uh, through publication to demonstrate uh, the ability to rescue uh, uh, disease animal models of acute liver failure. Uh, and so we uh, struck a deal with them that gives us the ability to access these cells. Uh, and we're actually evaluating these cells right now in our bioprinted tissues to provide a scalable hepatocyte cell therapy. I mentioned that uh, we are uh, entirely focused uh, uh, in terms of our internal efforts on our proprietary pipeline, but we see our uh, technology as a broadly applicable approach to uh, enabling this new frontier in regenerative, med me regenerative medicines through these tissue therapeutics. And so we partner with groups around the world. Uh, this is a sample of some of our uh, partnerships where we provide access to our technology and retain licensing rights on the tissues. And so we have applications in the uh, neur neuronal space, uh, in the cardiac space, uh, musculoskeletal space, and other areas, and we'll 
uh, progress the most promising opportunities uh, through internal developments at the right stage. Last but not least, I'd like to highlight uh, our outstanding team uh, at Aspect. We've assembled a team of uh, innovators and entrepreneurs and really leaders in the regenerative medicine space. Uh, I'm here with uh, our Chief Business Development Officer, Eric Rusin, so you could definitely connect with him uh, off, uh, offline, uh, and I definitely look forward to connecting with you as well. Uh, we've also assembled a truly uh, world-class scientific advisory board uh, with the likes of James Shapiro, the pioneer of the Edmonton Protocol, uh, Anil Dawin out of uh, uh, King College London, uh, one of the, the world-renowned uh, uh, clinicians in the hepatocyte cell therapy space. Uh, and so we're really excited to march forward with this outstanding team and, and we're actively hiring and so we're also looking uh, to uh, bring uh, outstanding people uh, to our team as well as we continue to march forward on our goal to uh, bring these tissue therapeutics to first in human trials uh, over the next couple of years. So with that, I'd like to thank uh, you all again uh, for listening to, uh, to the story and so great to be here in person again and look forward to connecting with you all uh, offline. Thank you very much.